How to Sew the Birdhouse Peg Bag, available in two beautiful prints, Bluebell House or Lavender House. Hang your washing out in style with this beautifully illustrated birdhouse peg bag with a nesting bird inside, of course. Cutting out. Press your fabric panel. And if you have a look at it, you can see all the pieces are labelled with the name of the piece above each one. You need to cut out those labels and pin them to the top of all the pieces. There are some extra pieces like these two here that you can use for your own makes. There's also extra applique pieces that you can use to sew onto your peg bag if you want to decorate it. Don't forget to pin the labels to the top of each piece to remind you during assembly. Making the peg bag front. If you want to add any of the extra applique details, do so at this stage. I applique the lavender house to it. <clears throat> Take the peg bag front lining and place it wrong sides up. Now draw around the printed circle. You should be able to see this through the fabric. Place the peg bag front outer and the peg bag front lining right sides facing, making sure all the raw edges match up. All the way around the top of the roof, down the sides and the bottom. It's important that all these edges match up so your circle's in the right place. Now, pin the two layers together inside the circle and outside the circle. You're going to be sewing along that drawn line. So in order to keep the pins in whilst you're sewing, if you place them about an inch outside the circle either side, this will hold the layers together, but they won't be in the way of your sewing. Now sew together all the way around that drawn line. Once this is done, you can remove all of the pins. Now you need to cut out the circle. So holding the two layers together, make a small snip and then cut out so that you are cutting quarter of an inch inside the circle so to the left of that drawn line. You need to cut fairly close to it so that the circle will turn out nicely, but not so close that you snip the stitching. About a quarter of an inch is okay. Make sure you're cutting through both layers of fabric. Once you've cut that out, to help the circle turn out nicely, snip, make small snips through both layers of fabric about a quarter of an inch, half an inch apart, just up to the line of stitching, but not actually into the stitching. Make sure you don't cut through the stitches. If you slip at all and you do, just pop it back under the machine and stitch back over the seam. Do this all the way around the edge of the circle. Now press the seam open by pressing the top layer over to the right side. Now you need to post the lining through the outer. Now rearrange it so that the wrong side of the lining and the wrong side of the outer are facing each other. And make sure all the raw edges of the outer and the lining are matching up. It's best if you turn it over and do it from one side and then do it from the other. Now ease out the edges of the circle and press well. Once this is pressed you've got a nice neat circle <coughs> that you can see from the lining side and a neat circle that you can see from the outer side. Top stitch all the way around this edge to neaten and also hold the lining in place. Assembling the peg bag. Turn the top short edge of the peg bag front outer under by quarter of an inch to the wrong side. So if you measure half an inch from the top short edge and mark this with a pin in a couple of places along, then turn the edge over to meet up with that pin 
you've then turned it over by a quarter of an inch to the wrong side. Just press this in place. You're not going to sew it at this stage. Just press it in place so it stays turned under. Repeat this to turn under the top short edge of the front lining, the back lining and the back outer as well. So that all of those top short edges are turned under by quarter of an inch. Now take the peg bag front outer and the peg bag back outer and place them right sides facing. Match up the raw edges all the way around and pin together. Make sure that you only pin the outers together because remember the front lining is already sewn onto the front outer when you sew the circle into place. So match up all the raw edges all the way around, but making sure that you keep the lining out of the way and you only pin the outers together. Pin together down the sides. Make sure you match up those corner points at the bottom of the roofs and the corner points at the top of the roofs. Match up the bottom corners at the base of the peg bag. And again, match up those corner points, always checking to make sure you're not pinning the front lining in as well. Make sure those turned over under edges stay turned under and match at the top. Now let's sew it together all the way around the side, starting at the top of the turned under edge, across the bottom, up the other side, around the roof and stopping at the other turned under edge. Now it's important you don't sew into the lining so the easiest way to avoid this is fold the lining over so it's completely out of the way of the seams and just pop a pin in to hold it in place. Now you can sew it together. So once you've sewn the front outer to the back outer all the way round, you can see that the top turning is left open. Unfold the front lining now take the back lining and place this right sides facing with the front lining. Again, pin together, matching up the turned of under top edges and making sure you only pin the linings together and not the outers. Pin together in exactly the same way as you did the outers, matching up the edges of the roofs, the corner sections of the roof, the base sections, always pinning through the linings and not the outers. Pin together at the corner point of the roof, again at the base. Rearrange it as you go along to make sure that the raw edges are matching and the, all the corners and edges as well. and then pin together at the top of the turned under edges, making sure they stay turned under. Now sew together all the way around the edge of the lining pieces. Again, to make sure that you don't sew into the outers, fold it out of the way around that circle edge and pop a pin in to hold it in place. Now once this is all sewn together, all the way around, you can unpin the outer pieces. Adding the hanger. Once you've sewn the outers and the linings together, snip off all the corners to reduce bulk. You're going to be placing the lining inside the outer, so the less bulk that you have at these corner points, the better. When you get to the bottom corner of the roof, make a snip into the corner, but not into the stitches and then cut out a little V section. Otherwise you've got a lot of fabric at this stage with the outers and the linings. So by cutting out that, it will reduce bulk. Repeat this to cut out a little V from the other corner. Make sure you cut the outers and not into the linings at this stage. Cut off the corner points at the base. 
again just working into the outers at this point and cut off the corner points at the corners of the roofs. Snip off a little bit extra as well, not just across the corner, just because it reduces the fabric bulk at this stage. Once you've done the outer pieces, clip off the corners and snip off the points of all the lining pieces as well. Now this is done, fold the seam allowance over to one side and press it open. This will help when you turn it right sides out to make sure that the seam of the outers and the linings lies right on the edge. It's worth taking the time to do this as it will save you time later and you'll get a neater finish as well. Repeat this with the lining pieces as well so that you've pressed the seam open all the way around. Now you can turn your peg bag right sides out. So put your hand inside the turning gap in the top of the outer and gradually pull the whole lining and outer out through the turning gap. Do this quite slowly and carefully so that you don't put any strain on the seam at the edge of the turning gap. But the space is big enough, it's not too tricky to do. Now you've got the outer right sides out. So make sure that the lining is pushed inside the outer. Push out the corner points at the bottom of the base. Use a stick or a pointed tool, nothing too sharp because you don't want to go through the stitches. But in order to get everything lying flat, you need to push out the corners of the base and make sure that the corners of the linings sit right in the corners. Now, when it comes to the top of the roof, pull out the roof and push your pointing tool through into the cor inside the corners to push them out but just through the outer section at this stage, rather than the lining. You need to push out the corners of the outer and the lining one at a time. So push your pointing tool in and push out those corners so that they lie right on the edges. You can remove any labels at this stage. You won't need them anymore. So take time to make sure everything lies flat. Once you've got the roof edges pushed out, push the, I'm now pushing the lining so that it sits right inside, so the edges of the roof lining are sitting right in the edges of the outer lining. Now press everything flat, making sure those seams lie right on the very edges. You need to ease it all so everything is lying nice and flat. Now, to hold the turning gap open and the lining and the outers together, pin the front lining to the front outer all the way around, but just the two front pieces. Make sure the lining just sits very slightly inside the outer so that it can't be seen from the outside. So you can see here that the lining is just a little bit below the outer. This will give you a nice, neat top edge. And pin it together. Now sew the lining. You can either top stitch all the way around the edge or you can sew it by hand. It's entirely up to you. Depends which you, pref you find easier. Pin it together all the way around, making sure the lining sits flat inside the outer and then top stitch all the way around, but obviously leaving the turning gap not top stitch so that stays open. Now you, this gives you a nice neat edge, but it also holds the lining flat inside at the same time. Now take a coat hanger. This is a normal wire coat hanger. It's a little bit too long and I don't want the base bar on it. So the easiest thing to do, lay it on top of the peg bag and take a pair of pliers and at the very end, that's where the wire snippers are, just squeeze those around and that will cut it off. Lay it back on and trim off the other end. 
Again, using the very inside edge of the pliers as that's where the cutting bit is. You may already have a coat hanger that will fit, but this is a normal wire coat hanger that you get with your dry cleaning. Now pop the hook up through the turning gap and then put the ends of the wires inside the roof. They'll sit nice and neatly inside and stay in place. And your peg bag is now finished. Pop your pegs inside and the little bird in his nest will always be looking through the front at you.